a company that grows at a rate of 10% does not deserve a PE multiple of more than 14 because as we can see a company why hello there welcome back to another video so today we're going to do a stock analysis on Salesforce so let's start so Salesforce right now is trading at $234 per share and so our analysis will be relative to this price and by the end of the video I will give you guys my fair value estimation as well and so at $234 per share multiply by its outstanding shares we get a market cap of 227 billion and its enterprise value is 222 billion after adding debt and subtracting cash so the difference of 5 billion between the market cap and enterprise value would mean that salesforce has 5 billion dollars more in cash than in debt now let's take a look at their income statement and so we can see that Salesforce has increased their revenues at a very fast pace, going from $5 billion in 2015 to $35 billion in the trailing 12 months. And we will take a look at all the Kager numbers in a bit. Moving on, we can see that gross profit has also increased at a very rapid rate. Right now, it is at $27 billion. And let's see if margins actually increase. We can see that margins stayed somewhat the same at right around 75%. Operating income margin, however, has increased over the years and it is right now sitting at around 18%. Although I'm not sure if this is a permanent thing because the jump from 6% to 17% is actually quite huge. But it could be that Salesforce has just found a way to become more efficient. And for me, it's a good sign that R&D expenses have not been cut by too much to achieve this 10% increase in operating income. Net income right now at 5.4B and we will take a look at their free cash flow numbers in a bit and see if their free cash flow would be a better measure as Salesforce net income seems to be going up and down and there are likely to be one-off items that are affecting the net income numbers. We can see that for outstanding shares, it has been diluted from 2015 with 600 million shares and right now at around 980 million. A little good news would be that shares actually peaked in 2023 and it seems like they are starting to actually buy back and reduce share count. So it could be likely that their share dilution phase is over. We can see that revenue per share has only increased by around 4.5x from 2015 to the trailing 12 months versus the absolute number of the revenues in 2015 would be around a 7x compared to the trailing 12 months. And that is the negatives of diluting shares. However, I think for a company like Salesforce, it is worth it to achieve an excellent balance sheet and to tide over the so-called bad financial times if it were to happen. Moving on to their balance sheet, usually the main thing I look at is just the net debt and Salesforce has a negative net debt of 5 billion which obviously means that their cash and short term equivalents can clear off their liabilities with an excess of 5 billion suggesting that of course Salesforce is in a very good financial position and they will have a higher probability to like I said tight through bad times. Finally let's take a look at their cash flow before the valuation and growth metrics and again a recap the net income is at 5.4 billion in the trailing 12 months and we can see that their levered free cash flow is actually way above that which is very surprising and they have 12.8 billion in levered free cash flow for free cash flow per share we can see that right now it is at 11 dollars and 67 cents and we will circle back to this number when i'm giving you guys my fair value estimation Moving on to their valuation metrics, the main thing I look at is of course their gap PE for the trailing 12 months. Right now it is at 42 which obviously suggests that Salesforce is overvalued because what a 42 PE actually means is that if you take 1 divided by 42, we can see that Salesforce only has an earnings yield of around 2.4%. Meaning to say, for every $100 invested, Salesforce will only generate you $2.40. Which again, would literally mean that it would take Salesforce 42 years to generate $100 back for you as an investor. 
of course this is also excluding growth and we will factor in growth later for the fair value estimation. For me, an enterprise value to sales of 6.2 is also considered overvalued because again, same thing, if we take 1 divided by 6.2, we will get 0.16, which would mean that for every $100 invested, Salesforce only generates $16 in revenue. Moving on to the growth metrics, we can see that their 10-year CAGR for revenue is at 23%. However, revenue growth has slowed down over the years to 20% to 20 over the past 5 years, 17 over 3, and only 11 in the past year. For me, anything above 10% I would consider a solid company, and 20% would be a very good company, in my opinion. Net income has compounded at 36% over the past 5 years, but due to the effects of share dilution, we can see that EPS has only compounded at around 30.5%, but the more important number is definitely the levered free cash flow for me, which only compounded at 25%, and I say only because I'm comparing it to their EPS and net income, but a 25% compounding rate for their levered free cash flow is already very good. So for me, I would say that Salesforce is a company that is going to grow at around 10-15% to 15 between revenue, EPS, and levered free cash flow. I do not have reason to believe that they will grow at around a 20% or even 30% clip, but then again, I have not taken a look at their most recent earnings report. So if you have reason to believe that they will continue to grow at a faster pace like in the past, then you might want to adjust the valuation that I give to a higher number. For me, I would give Salesforce a multiple of around 14 to 16 times earnings slash free cash flow. And I will explain why I think that they deserve a 14 to 16 times multiple using this table in a bit. First, let me give you guys the upper end of my fair value range and let's take 16 times 12.8 billion, 0.85B and we get a market cap of 205 billion. So let's take 12.85 times 14 and that will give us a market cap of around 180 billion for the lower end range. So my fair value estimation for Salesforce in terms of market cap is between 180 to 200 billion and if we want to get a per share value we can take 200 billion divided by 983 million of outstanding shares and we will get a share price of 203 dollars which is the upper end of my range and let's take 180 billion divided by 983 again and we will get 183 dollars so the fair value estimation for Salesforce for me is $183 per share on the low side and $203 per share on the high side. Which would mean that right now for me, Salesforce is between 10 to 20% overvalued. Okay, and now I'm going to explain why Salesforce deserves a 14 to 16 multiple. And let me quickly explain how my table actually works. So if we have a company that has a PE of 10, its one year earnings yield or internal rate of compounding would be 10% and we get that by taking 1 divided by 10, which is 10%. And for a company with a PE of 7, for example, we can take 1 divided by 7 and we can see that the earnings yield or the internal rate of compounding is 14% per year and assume that there is no growth and revenue growth in 5 years my return for a company with a PE of 10 would be 50% in 10 years it would be 100% so if the company has growth of around 10% projected in the first year it would generate 10% internal rate of compounding and in year 2 because the earnings grew by 10%, the internal rate of compounding would be 11%, so on and so forth. And in 5 years, that would mean 61% for the internal rate of compounding. So for $100 invested in this company here, the company would generate $61 over the 5 years that you hold it for. Of course, this is projected, excluding, of course, inflation and whatnot. And so for me, for a company that does not grow, Basically, a stagnant company deserves a PE multiple of 7 
and a PE multiple of 7 compounds 14% internally for every single year which would mean that they have a 70% return on year 5 and for me, a company that grows at a rate of 10% does not deserve a PE multiple of more than 14 because as we can see, a company that grows at a rate of 10% per year would take 7.3 years to double their earnings meaning to say a company with a PE of 14 7.3 years later if they grow at 10% per year would take 7.3 years to basically become a company that has a PE of 7 which finally then only generates you an earnings yield of 14 per year so let's just round up to a PE of 15 because I have the numbers already you can see that if the company grows at 10% and your initial purchase is at a PE of 15. Five years later, the company would only generate 41% for you or $41 per $100 invested, which is obviously way lesser than the stagnant company bought at a PE of 7. So I know this is very dry. If you have any questions with what I just said, you can just leave it down in the comment section below and I will try to clarify. But basically what I'm trying to say is that growth is actually not guaranteed and even if it is, in the first 5 years you cannot really see the effects that compounding the growth has and it's more important to purchase a company with a lower starting PE multiple than to purchase a company that has a high growth because like I showed you in the example even if the company grows at a pretty fast pace, if your starting multiple is high, then there is no point as well. But so anyways, if Salesforce is bought at a PE of 15, which is right around my fair value range, 14 to 16, we can see that in 5 years, it would generate 45% and in 10 years, 133%. If, of course, that they grow at 15% per year which is still lower than 70% and 140% even with the growth priced in so ideally we would want to buy at even lower than 15 probably closer to 10 would be a great buy and even lower than that would be an excellent buy but for me the reason why my fair value range is at 14 to 16 would be because a growing company would be less likely to decline in earnings than compared to a stagnant company because at the end of the day this is just projections and if a company is truly stagnant at a PE of 7 who is to say that the company won't be declining over the next few years and so that is about it from me I hope you liked the video please help to like the video and also subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye bye